Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, there we are. Well, I'm excited about today. It's really awesome to see so many teams out here represented. Um, how many of you are representing more than one team? Anybody representing more than one team in here? No. Oh, I've seen a few. They must be out around. But um, I, have a, I have a Yankee shirt underneath my Syracuse shirt um, and a Yankees hat that I can't wear out on stage, but I'll get to, to wear it after service, so I'm looking forward to that. We have lots of Syracuse fans out here. I see lots of orange. That's exciting. If you're at home, hopefully you're sporting your jersey as well. And we're looking forward to tailgating after service. Um, yeah, I've already been out there kind of scoping it out, and there looks like there's going to be a lot of yummy food and fun activities out there. So we are in week seven of our series on Set Apart and the Fruit of the Spirit. Um, we've been reading in Galatians. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no laws against these things. When we read this verse, it is easy to see each one of these as um, separate qualities and separate fruits. But it is actually referring to one fruit with lot, many different um, characteristics of that fruit. So I used this example a few weeks ago when I was speaking on peace, but it's like if I had an apple up here. It's an apple, but there's many ways I could describe that apple. I could describe it as sweet, I could describe it as crunchy, I could describe it as its color, maybe it's green, maybe it's red, but it is still an apple. Those are the characteristics of the apple. This is the same with the fruit of the Spirit. It is one kind of fruit with many ways to describe it. When we follow Jesus, these are the things that will be evident in our lives. Those characteristics. These are the things that will set you apart from others. So the first week we talked about love. The next week we talked about joy and then peace, then patience, then kindness, goodness. And today we're going to be talking about faithfulness. So why don't we go ahead and pray before we get started. God, we just thank you so much, God, for this opportunity that we have to, um, to know you. God, that you show, God, you show so much concern for us and care for us in the way that you want to produce these things in our lives. And God, I just pray today, God, that as we speak about faithfulness, God, that um, each and every single one of us would take something from that, God, that we would find a way in which we could be more faithful in our lives. And God, I pray that we would leave today looking for ways on how we can be more set apart in the fruit of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we throw around this word faith, right? We talk about faith. We talk about faith as it concerns um, our faith in God, or um, we use it to explain that we are a person of faith. There's many uh, ways that we throw that word around. But what does it actually mean? And what do we mean when we talk about faith or faithfulness? What does that, what does that mean? When I think about faithfulness, I think about trust, right? I think about faithfulness and trust going hand in hand. And for example, who in here has ever had someone break a promise with you? Anybody? I think all of us, right, have had someone who's broken a promise. Anybody in here ever broken a promise for somebody else? Like you've promised something to someone and then broke it. I think if we were all being honest, all of our hands would be up, right? Because even if it's something that isn't, um, doesn't seem that big, I think we've all unintentionally even broken promises. But faithfulness is something we value in our relationships, right? We value that. We value it when people promise something to us that they're going to follow through. That if somebody is faithful then that means they're going to follow through with what they've committed to. When we consider God's faithfulness to us, we understand that God is faithful. It is his character. Therefore, he can't break his promises. 
because it's who he is. He's faithful. So it's impossible for God to break his promises. And we reflect God's character from the overflow of faithfulness in our own lives. So when we're faithful, we're reflecting God's character. God's faithfulness is a part of his character and his nature. When the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives and faithfulness starts emanating from us, it reflects God to the world. Isn't that cool? It reflects God to the world when we are faithful. See, faithfulness begins and ends with God. So it started with God and it ends with God because he is faithful. In 2 Timothy, it says, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. God can be trusted because it is who he is. God cannot deny who he is, therefore he is faithful always. No matter how much we feel we have let God down, the areas where we have not been faithful to him, he has always been faithful and will continue to be faithful. Always. This is why when we look back on various seasons or times in our lives, we can see his faithfulness woven through those seasons. Even when, maybe in that season, we couldn't see it, right? If you've ever looked back, and you can just see where God has been faithful in those seasons. So as we understand God's faithfulness, it helps us to understand the kind of faithfulness the Holy Spirit produces in us, right? So we're talking about that verse in Galatians, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Just as God is producing the other attributes in my life that we have been talking about over the last several weeks and in your life, he is also producing faithfulness. He is producing faithfulness in each one of us. It says this in, the com- in a commentary that I read this week. It says, the last three virtues are concerned with Christians primarily as they are to be in themselves. They are to be characterized by faithfulness, a word that also means faith, but undoubtedly here means that which makes a person one on whom others can rely. That is trustworthiness or reliability. This word describes a faithful servant, including servants of the gospel and of Christ. It describes the character of those who will die for their confession of Christ. It goes without saying that it also is descriptive of the character of Christ, the faithful witness and of God the Father who always acts faithfully towards his people. So when we look at this word faithful, In Galatians, the Greek word for faithfulness is pistis. And pistis actually means faith or faithfulness. So when we read faithfulness in the fruit of the Spirit, it could also be interchanged with faith. They are the same thing. So the word pistis comes from another Greek word, patho. Patho means to persuade or be persuaded, to come to trust or come to faith. In order to understand faithfulness, we must understand what faith is. We can't truly understand faithfulness unless we understand what faith is. In Hebrews, it says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed of God's, at God's command, that What we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Faith is shown in the way we hope. Our persistent confidence and hope that God's promises are true. Faith was shown in how God's people in the Old Testament had hoped for God's promises and placed their trust in God that he would be faithful to his promises. They were built on this foundation of faith. They had a foundation of faith that what God said he was going to do, he was going to do it. And then just a few verses further, it says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Faith is essential to pleasing God. So it says, it says it's impossible to please God without faith. 
Faith is required to believe in a God we cannot see. We have to have faith to believe in God, right? Faith is required to trust that God's word is true. When I read my Bible, I am having faith. I have faith. I am trusting that what God says in his word is true. We exercise faith when we trust and implement his word in our lives. And when we pray to God and when we place our hope in him. Those are the ways in which we implement faith in our lives. This is how we are faithful to God. Then, and when we put faith in the context of faithfulness as an attribute of the fruit of the Spirit, we understand that faithfulness to God is placing our faith in him time and time again. Faithfulness is a lifestyle of putting our confidence, our hope, our faith in God, and entrusting God with our past, our present, and our future. It says this in Merriam-Webster Dictionary. It says, faithful means to imply unswerving adherence to a person or thing or to the oath or promise by which a tie was contracted. Faithfulness is proven by our loyalty and trust to God. We see faithfulness when we stay committed to our spouse. We see faithfulness is proven in how we remain trustworthy even when no one else is looking. As we exercise our faithfulness to God, we will see the overflow in our faithfulness to others. Valuing faithfulness to God will help us value our faithfulness to others. Faithfulness is seen in a moment and proven over a lifetime, right? We can see moments of faithfulness, but it's only proven over an amount of time, right? Here are some things for us to, uh, to consider about faithfulness. First thing is faithfulness is given by God. In the Strong's Dictionary, it says this about the Greek word, pistis, or faith. Faith is always received from God and never generated by us. We cannot generate faith on our own. It is given by God. We can't generate it on our own. It is given by God. In Ephesians, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Faith is given by God so that we cannot give ourselves credit for believing in the grace that saved us. We have to give credit back to God. And Romans it says, so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. It comes from the gospel message from Jesus. And Galatians says, but again, this is what it says, right? It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Faithfulness is produced by the Holy Spirit. In order to be faithful in our own lives, we have to be able to trust God. The faithfulness that is given by God helps us to be faithful to God, which in turn helps us to be faithful to those around us. So this week, I um, just so happened to see faithfulness in action. And I kind of wanted to highlight a moment. So for uh, many of you, you know that we have a board of trustees. And our board of trustees is responsible for um, the temporal things. So looking over the building, finances, things like that. And this week, um, one of our trustees had, had an opportunity to do some of the landscaping around here. So all the pretty bushes and everything out there that have been trimmed um, is because of their hard work. But in that, what I want to highlight is, um, and I didn't get permission to do this, but I think it'll be okay, but um, is Nick Scholes. And Nick Scholes has been a trustee for years. However, Nick Scholes just went off of our trustees this year. However, Nick was there helping with the landscaping, and helping spearhead that day along with his son and his son's friend. And what really stood out to me in that was that he doesn't have the position of trustee anymore, but his faithfulness to still help with the church and the maintenance of the church is still there. And I think that that um, was a really incredible moment to watch it. It really speaks to Nick's faithfulness. Yeah, we can give a hand for it. Dick's up here, by the way. We're here in this row. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, so faithfulness is given by God. So we can't take credit for faith because faith is given to us by God. The second thing is faithfulness is seen in how we trust God. In Proverbs 3, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. There are many things in our lives that do not make sense. You don't have to have been around for um, very long before you figure that out, that there are just things that happen that really just don't make sense to us. And we aren't asked to trust ourselves or trust our own understanding, but we're asked to trust God and, in, and his in understanding. We are asked to trust God with everything. He says, with our whole heart, believing that when we don't understand, that God is still faithful. That's that faithfulness, trusting that God is still faithful no matter what season I go through. Uh, so I wanted to kind of talk about um, a friend of mine. So when Tom and I lived in Montana, uh, there was a district or a, a district youth uh, director who basically looks over the whole entire state's youth uh, for the Assemblies of God. And Tom was a youth pastor at the time. And um, they really kind of just took us under their wings. The, um, his name was Dan. And him and his wife, Robin. And they really kind of walked through some things with us in life. And they're just a really incredibly faithful couple. And I've kind of stayed in touch with them off and on throughout the years, especially his wife. Well, um, about a week ago, he tragically died in a car accident. And very, a very tragic situation and what stood out to me is in this unimaginable circumstance in grief, his wife posted this picture. So I'm going to show you a picture. She posted this picture, and, um, uh, and you can see it's a lady holding up her heart to heaven. But it was what she wrote with that. She said, I'm continuing to offer my heart to God because I can't make sense of this, and I choose to trust his heart with mine. And I've watched her walk this out, and it isn't, I've watched her walk this out for several years in different areas, but this is, you know, she's going through the worst of the worst, and she keeps placing her trust back in God, trusting that he is still faithful. And that that is just, I think that's an incredible testament to her own faithfulness and the faith that God has given her to be able to walk through a really difficult time and still put her trust in him. And um, one of the things, is kind of just a, a side note, but I, I tuned in for the memorial service this week, and one of the things that they said about Dan, which I think just speaks to his faithfulness, and I've seen it in action, was they said that he, he said, and that he has never been given a promotion, just a bigger towel to serve more people. Isn't that just a really incredible way to go through life and just really showcases his faithfulness to people and that it's always been about serving people and not about the title. And um, so just as a side note, that was, I think that was really neat, but I think that we can all learn something from that, that when we walk through difficult seasons, we are still asked to be faithful and still asked to trust God. And it's in those moments that we can look back on God's faithfulness and be able to approach our, season, our current season with faithfulness. In Proverbs 3, 3 through 4, which is right before that verse, it says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. In other words, don't allow yourself to forget faithfulness, right? Make it a part of who you are. Embrace it. Make sure that it is something that is not far from your mind. If faithfulness is a part of who you are, you will have favor with both God and others. Right? It's talking about making that faithfulness a part of you. It's not just something we do, but it's who we are. In 1 Peter, it says, You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice 
with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. In putting our trust in God, we find the salvation that he offers, and this will lead to joy. When we put our faith in him, we truly see the salvation that he offers us, and that will lead to joy. Galatians, it says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting, or in the NIV it says faith, in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Making the decision to follow Jesus means I'm entrusting my life to him and placing my faith in him. So first thing is faithfulness is given by God. Second thing is faithfulness is seen in how we trust God. And the third thing is faithfulness is proven in time. I've known people in my life that I trust because of years of faithfulness, years of proven character. I've watched them withstand difficult seasons, watched them make the right decision, even when it would be easier to compromise. And I've watched them continuously show up. I would describe them as faithful. There are also people that I know a little bit that seem really nice and seem to be good people, but that doesn't mean I'm going to trust them like I trust those who have proven themselves faithful time and time again. Our faithfulness is proven through time and seasons. When we are known for our faithfulness, in other words, we are trusted, our words are refreshing to others because of that established trust. Proverbs 25, it says, Trustworthy messengers refresh like snow in summer. They revive the spirit of their employer. But in contrast, if we trust someone who is not faithful, it says in Proverbs 26, Trusting a fool to convey a message is like cutting off one's feet and drinking poison. Faithfulness matters, and it can only be proven by continually being faithful over time. One act of faithfulness will not undo years of unfaithfulness. However, it is a start. Tom and I have a friend that we've known for several years now, um, since I think before Elijah was even born, so probably over 12 years now. And when we first came to know him, he had just given his life to Jesus, and he had come from um, uh, years and years of addiction. And one of the things that really stood out to us is, like, within a day, like, everything just switched for him. He gave up drugs, he immersed himself in church, and really just tried to connect um, in every possible way. I think he, lo- he was involved in a small group every single night of the week, just to keep himself connected and to kind of fill some, some of that space where he might have been doing things that he shouldn't have been doing before. And one of the things that I learned by watching him is we only knew him after he had made that decision and fully um, given up everything. However, he had come from years of being a drug addict. He had stolen from his parents several times to buy drugs. He had pushed his whole entire family away. And he was known for lying all the time and all the things that come with addiction. It even though he had that dramatic um, conversion, that dramatic change in trusting God and, t- and putting his life back into God's hands, it did not change that he, it took years to rebuild that trust with his family. It took, it took several years to be able to rebuild that and to show his faithfulness time and time and time again to rebuild that trust. So my encouragement to you today is if you would describe yourself as somebody who has not always been faithful and maybe you've lost trust with others or um, maybe it's just not where it should be, you can start today. It will take time to rebuild that trust, but the relationship that my friend Steve has now with his family is incredible. And they've really seen what God has done in his life that overflow of faithfulness in his life 
has shown them who God is and the, what he has done in his life. And he can do, and God can do that for you today too. You can start that journey to being more faithful. So faithfulness is given by God. Faithfulness is seen in how we trust God. Faithfulness is proven in time. And God's faithfulness is not dependent on our faithfulness. Talked about that a little bit in the beginning. We brought up that verse, 2 Timothy, where it says, If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. Even if today you would say, I'm not a faithful person, I have not proven myself to be trustworthy, it doesn't change his faithfulness to you. He still remains faithful to you. It's not conditional. Hebrews, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is who he is. There is nothing you can do or anyone else can do to change that. That's good news for us, right? People will let you down. People will break your trust. But it doesn't change God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness is still to be trusted because he can't not be trustworthy. In trying to understand faithfulness, we see that faithfulness is given by God. That it's seen in how we trust God. It's proven in time. That God's faithfulness is not dependent on our faithfulness. His faithfulness begins and our God's faithfulness begins and ends with him. And faithfulness is seen in a moment and proven over a lifetime. I wonder... If we really took these things to heart, what would that look like? What would that look like for each and every single one of us, right? Maybe what you need to hear today is God's faithfulness to you. Maybe you're in a season or just coming out of a season where it's been difficult to see God in that season. Maybe first step is trusting in his faithfulness and watching it play out. I wonder what that would look like if we all did that, right? And how we would approach the next season and the next season and the next season if we truly put our trust in God. We would have healthier relationships with each other, right? And we would have proven trust with each other because of our value on faithfulness. And I believe it would transform our church. If, if every single person in here was being faithful, then it means our church would be known for being faithful. And it means that we'd be known for putting God first and that God be the center of everything we do. And it means that to those who don't know God, our faithfulness would stand out. It would look different than what they have known in their own lives. We would stand out for the overflowing of faithfulness that is seen in our life. That overflow that comes from putting our faith in God and being faithful to Him would start to overflow into every single one of our relationships. Because I know something that when we value faithfulness, to God, when we put those things into practice to show our faithfulness to God, then it can't help but overflow out of our lives onto others. So again, in 2 Timothy, it says, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. He is faithful, has always been, and will continue to be faithful no matter what. That won't change. He does not withhold his faithfulness from us. He can't and he won't. But for us to truly understand his faithfulness, we have to put our trust in him. It requires us to have faith. And again, in Hebrews 11, it says, And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. 
so it requires us to step out in that faith, to step out in that trust that he's given us. There's a um, parable that I want to read today that's from Matthew. And it says, a faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. But what if the servant is evil and thinks my master won't be back for a while? And he begins beating the other servants, partying and getting drunk. The master will return unannounced and unexpected, and he will cut the servant into pieces and assign him to a place with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, I don't know about you, but when I read that, I want to be known as the faithful servant, not the unfaithful one. I mean, the outcome sounds pretty terrible, right? But what I can learn from that is that faithfulness is seen in the faithful servant because of the faithful servant's actions, right? It's talking about how the faithful servant treated the other servants and how the faithful servant was waiting for the return of his or her master. But the unfaithful servant is not really concerned about when the master is going to come back. And they're not really concerned about their own actions, right? You wouldn't, you would say that they're unfaithful, just like as this parable says. But we're all called to be faithful servants. And I know that I want the faithfulness that the Holy Spirit produces. And that's the good news, right? Is that we all have access to that faithfulness. We all have access to that faith. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives we have to trust that when he says he's faithful, that he's faithful. And I know that in turn, I would think that all of us in this room want to say that we are faithful in our relationship with God, that we place God first in our life, and that we center our days around him and our relationships around him. Right now, I want to speak to maybe some of you in this room who maybe haven't made that decision yet to know God. Maybe it's that faithfulness part of it that is kind of just, you just don't have people in your life that are faithful. So it's hard for you to imagine a God who is faithful. It's hard to imagine a God that you can trust. Maybe life situations haven't looked the greatest and it's been hard for you to see his faithfulness in those things but if you haven't made that decision today I want to give you an opportunity to step out in that faith that God gives to be able to say yes God I want to I want to prioritize you I want to put you first I want to trust you with my whole heart I want to trust you with everything knowing that you're always faithful. You're never going to let me down. Your promises are good, and you hold to your promises. So if everyone in the room, close your eyes, bow your heads. Those of you online, join in with us. If that's you today, and you would say, I haven't made that decision yet. There's just been something holding me back, but maybe you're feeling that feeling right now of, I need to step out in faith. I need to step out in trust and make God number one in my life. With nobody moving around and everybody's eyes closed and heads bowed. If you would say, Megan, I really want to make that decision today. It's time for me to stop waiting and waiting and waiting, but today is the day. If that's you, if you just Put your hand up for me to be able to see you. I'm just going to look around the room. 
I'm over on my, my right, your left, and I'm just going to kind of look across the room. If that's you, you can just put your hand up. Anybody in the center of the room I can be praying with today? And anybody on the left that I can pray with? Yes. I don't want to miss anybody, so if you could just put your hand up really high so I can see you. Yes, I see you. Anybody else? Back in the middle of the room. And now over on my right. And if you're online, you can go ahead and just click the I raise my hand button and somebody will connect with you. So we're going to go ahead at this time and I want to pray this prayer. And for those of you who put your hand up, this prayer is a declaration. It's a prayer that is not just a prayer that's on a screen, but it's a life-altering prayer. It's a prayer that is going to change your life when you say these words and you mean these words. So if you'll repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I want to follow you. I invite you to be Lord of my life. Help me follow you every day. I want to leave my old life of sin behind and heal my broken relationship with God. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we celebrate with those who made a decision today? If you made a decision today, I'm going to encourage you not to leave here without saying, coming and telling somebody. If you're on our prayer team or you're an elder or um, a ministry leader or a pastor, if you could come down to the front to be able to pray for people. We're going to, be, we're going to go back into a song of worship here in a minute, but please do not leave. If you made that decision, please let somebody know or mark the spot on the back of one of those um, connect cards that's in the front or behind the pews. And um, yeah, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to go straight into worship. God, we just thank you, God, that you are a God who is faithful. God, that you are faithful to us even when we aren't. That your faithfulness is never changing, God. God, that you love us and you care about us and you desire, God, us to be faithful to you. God, you desire our faithfulness. God, I pray today, God, that every single one of us in here, God, would lead today, having uh, made even maybe a recommitment of our faithfulness and thinking about how we can show this in our life more. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, if you guys would stand to your feet, we're going to go back into worship.